In this example one, let's look at how to draw the V and M diagrams for a overhanging beam. Okay, this is an overhanging beam with the right end extended freely from a simply supported beam. Right? So following our steps to draw the V and M diagrams, we need to determine the reaction forces first and then draw the V diagram and then the M diagram. Right? So the first step will be to determine the reaction forces based on the known external loading. Okay, look at this, this uh, overhanging beam. So what kind of uh, um, reaction forces we have? Point A, we have a pin support. Right? So here we will have a AY and a AX. And point B, nothing. Point C, nothing. And point D, we have a DY. Right? So we just need to determine this AX, AY, and DY. So how to determine this? Free body diagram had been here, right? So we just uh, uh, list some equilibrium equations uh, to determine these three values, right? So the first of all, we have a Fx equals zero. Right? From this, we can derive that Ax is just zero. It's no other forces along x direction. Right. And Fy equals zero. From this, we know that Ay plus Dy equals 15 plus 7 times DE is 3. Right, this would be 36. Three, four, four, four. Okay, now we have one equation, two unknowns. We cannot solve it. Right, so we will just need to uh, find the other equation. We will sum MA equals zero. Okay, from here we will have um, MA, you will have a MB. MB minus uh, 15 times its arm, this will be AC, right? 4 plus 4, that will be 8. Then plus DY times the arm will be 12. Right? Then minus 7 times 3 times the arm will be um, 12 plus 3 over 2, right, equals 0. Okay, from this we can solve, uh, MB has been given, this is 25, right, so we can solve that DY is uh, 31.5 kilonewton. Then Ay, uh, it's just 36 minus uh, 31.5. It will be 4.5 kilonewton. Okay, now here we already determined that Ay, Ay is um, 4.5 kilonewton and dy is 31.5 okay so based on these two reaction forces and the external loading we can draw the uh, v diagram so here we can draw v diagram Okay, from the left end, from the left end point A, is there any uh, reaction force, external force? Yes, we have a y that is 4.5. Upward, so this, uh, we have a 4.5. Here, 
from A to B. There anything between A and B? No distribution, no concentrated loads, right? So nothing will happen. The value will not be changed to point B. So at point B, do we have uh, this uh, forces like uh, acting perpendicular to this uh, beam? No, we have only one bending moment, right? The bending moment, external bending moment, concentrated one, will not affect the shear force. Right? So it will not change. So after B, from B to C, nothing acting on this section BC, so it will not be changed. Keep the value to, this is 4.5, keep the value 4.5 to C, right? At point C, you will encounter a downward concentrated force, 15 kilonewton. Right, so this will go downward. To here, go downward by by 15. Right, so from uh. 4.5 downward by 15, this will go what? It's just a negative 10.5, right? This will be negative 10.5. Then from C to D, nothing acting on it. But at point D, you will encounter an upward 31.5. Right, so this will be going upward. Going upward by 31.5. Right, it will be reaching a value that will be 31.5 right, minus 10.5. It will be uh, 21. There will be 21 here. And after this point, it will be uh, a distributed load, constant distributed load, and the area is 7 times 3, that is 21. Okay, so 21. Here the value is 21, so it will be reducing from D to E, it will be reducing linearly by 21 down to zero. Okay, at the point E here it will be, the final value will be zero. Okay, so this is our V diagram. Okay, this is our V diagram here. Then based on this V diagram, we can draw uh, M diagram. Right. How to draw this V diagram? As we mentioned, we will need to calculate uh, the areas, right? The areas in the uh, um, in the sheet in, in the in the V diagram. Okay. Here we will have a A one, A two, A three, A four. Okay. We have this four areas. Okay. What is A one? A one would be 4.5 times 4, right, since the length that has been given is the 4, 4, 4, 3. Right. So it would be 18 kilonewton meter. And the A2 would be 4 point the same, right? The same. 18 kilonewton meter. And A3 will be uh, negative 10.5 times 4 equals negative 42 kilonewton meter. Right. The A4 will be, right, so you don't have to uh, calculate it since at the free end, no reaction forces, no added bending moment, it will be zero. 
right? So the at the right end it will be zero. <laughs> okay, then we can draw the M diagram. Again, just from point A to A, from point B to B, C, D, and E. So at the left end, again, we just start from the left end and then moving step by step to the right end. Okay, at the left end, we don't have a bending moment. Okay, we don't have external bending moment. We don't have reaction force as bending moment. Right, so we'll, we'll start from zero. Then from A to B, we will just uh, this change will be equal to a one. Right. The change will be equal to a one. It's eighteen. So we will just uh, m bending moment will be starting from zero and increase linearly to eighteen. This is eighteen. Then from point B, at point B, you have a external bending moment twenty five. Right it equals twenty five. This is Counterclockwise, so it will jump down to seven. Right, this is a down by twenty-five. Then here at point B, you get a you get a seven. Then from B to C, you will add another eighteen. It's a two, right? It's a equals eighteen. Here we get 11, right? Then from this 11, uh, C to D, C to D, it will be down by A3, and A3 equals uh, negative 42, right? So it will reaching here. This will be 11 minus uh, 42, will be negative 31. Right. Then from this point D to E, it will be clothing it. It will be clothing it, right? Because at point E, the moment will be also zero. Okay. But here will be another a, a, a straight line because the area A4 is a triangle. I, it will not be a straight line. It will be a curve. Okay, closing it. Okay, this is your bending moment diagram, M diagram. Okay, so uh, frequently in later sections, we will need to draw this V and uh, M diagrams then to identify the bending moment at a point or the, the maximum bending moment through this beam. Okay, in this case, obviously, if we are selecting uh, the largest value of bending moment, that will be here, right? So be familiar. I will provide more examples in after class exercises. Just make sure you are familiar with this analysis process, and uh, make sure you can find out the maximum values on a beam or the specific values at a point.